starting with our leadership structure, uh, we've managed to uh, increase the focus on global staff representation and for the first time Pacific uh, uh, voices and um, uh, managing to bring as many nationalities and perspectives as possible from civil society around the world. Uh, the C20, uh, on top of the steering committee and international advisory committee, has 11 working groups, which is the which uh, which has been this year the biggest uh, C20 in terms of the number of working groups. Uh, since this year, we have elevated the digital economy task force into uh, a working group. Every working group has an international lead and a local lead, and with nominating and working with the leads, we've tried to. Uh, make sure that we represent the most diverse expertise uh, and geographic um, uh, representation and gender balance. In terms of membership, which, uh, which is still open to civil society from all around the world, so far we have um, been joined by 750 uh, representatives of civil society from 80 countries. Uh, and the number is growing as uh, as we receive more registrations through, through the website. In uh, January last year, uh, we had a kickoff meeting in Riyadh, where the leadership structure and the leads met for the first time and endorsed their communique and their action plan for the year in the 2020 advocacy strategy. And we recommitted to the C20 principles that were adopted in 2019. All of these uh, the outcome documents were published transparently on the C20 website, and we continue to report back as we move on uh, uh, with the execution. The C20 uh, is an important element of the ecosystem of the G20, and to, to understand that, we would need to look into the landscape of the G20, uh, starting from the finance track, which has been uh, a closed uh, and more uh, restrictive space for uh, economic policy making in the G20. And then the Sherpa track, which involves all non-economic and non-financial issues, including employment, health, energy, um, climate, um, and the rest of the issues. All of these tracks end up with the ministerial, uh, ministerial meetings. As Arjun said, um, this year we had many extraordinary ministerial meetings that were uh, scheduled specifically to address the COVID-19 and also um, the year ends with a leader summit which also this year uh, there was an extraordinary leader summit. Throughout the process in the working groups, in the ministerials and in the leaders meetings, engagement groups come in to bring their perspectives. They bring independent voice representing their stakeholders uh, as C20, we represent civil society and we're honored to be channeling these voices. So for every ministerial meeting, we issue a statement. For every year, we issue a policy pack that has policy papers. For every leader summit, we issue a response, we issue a statement before, and we try to make sure that we publicly and privately advocate for civil society's perspective uh, within the G20 process. Our ambition from the beginning of the year was to increase C20's access to G20's meetings. And so far, we've received uh, an, an important invitation to the Sherpa meeting uh, that will be held uh, in September. We also have attended, the C20 chair has attended the Digital Economy Ministerial meeting. We were also invited to the very first G20 anti-corruption ministerial meeting in October. And so far, we've participated in a number of official uh, working group meetings, including education, development, health, employment, digital economy, and anti-corruption. Uh, at the same time, we uh, have been also successful in getting access to side events. Some of them were virtual, uh, and some of them were uh, physical before the pandemic. So we've managed to attend some um, finance track meetings around taxation, some climate meetings around carbon capture, uh, some environment meetings around land degradation, and many other uh, meetings that we were able to present to the society's voices. In these meetings, C20 is represented by uh, its expert leads and members who are uh, most familiar with these uh, topics. We also work uh, in line with other engagement groups. 
So uh, the, at the beginning of the year, um, we have, as C20, proposed a joint statement on glo global pandemic uh, preparedness. It was uh, endorsed and joined by the B20, the L20, the T20, W20 and Y20. And we managed to ring the bell early on uh, for the G20 to, um, to respond and prepare uh, uh, for the pandemic. We will continue working throughout the year with other engagement groups. <clears throat> As we mentioned, there have been many statements. The very first statement that was issued in January was about defending human rights and civic spaces. We also issued an urgent statement before the leaders' virtual summit and a response afterwards. We also sent open letters to uh, ministers of health and ministers of employment. We also held uh, the face-to-face -face meetings, which were one-on-one uh, -on -one meetings between C20 working groups and G20 working groups. Uh, back in March, and it was attended by 260 civil society participants, uh, engaging with 27 <clears throat> different G20 officials. Um, as you know, the, our very uh, last uh, achievement has been the launch of the C20 policy pack, which is a big document that summarizes all civil society's perspectives on G20 issues, 11 policy, uh, policy papers, addressing uh, G20 priorities and legacy issues, while also maintaining continuity of civil society's asks from uh, previous years. The C20 policy pack had two different compendiums, Sherpa track compendium and the finance track compendium, to make sure that we directly address the policy questions of the G20. Uh, our timeline is uh, still halfway through. We're still in June. We uh, have a lot of work ahead of us. Uh, in terms of advocacy and leading up to the C20 summit, which is scheduled to take place on October uh, 6th until 9th. We are also preparing to work on the C20 communique, which is the political declaration of C20, which is supposed to come out uh, on the C20 summit and has a very extensive consultative process uh, in the way that will start in September. Well, we would like to thank the organizers for uh, giving us the opportunity to present C20 this year and we invite you to join us as members and uh, registering uh, to be part of the civil society movement through our website. Thank you so much for the time.